so it's time for another installment on the power supply build. Um, so far, I've done the, I've tested the transformer, I've built the voltage reference, and I was talking about building the constant current section of the power supply. And this all up mess is what the constant current is, the bit of the power supply. So this area here, this is the constant current, just measuring current at the moment. I haven't put the switch or anything like that. This bit I'll explain in a minute what it is. As you know, the transformer that I had um, had three taps. It had one uh, 15 volt tap, which was for the actual uh, power supply itself to provide power for the past transistors and stuff like that. The other two, one was uh, 20 volt and one was 36 volt. Now these were um, not DC. These were the a on the AC side. So when I rectified it and uh, passed it through the Capaci capacitors the 20 volt came into about 28 volt and the 36 volt came about 40 something volt so they were kind of un um, uh, useless to me because uh, the voltage being so high now as I mentioned before the the op amps that I have on my um, the op amps that I use the OPA627 uh, works greatly when you've got the negative voltage negative rail as well on it um, especially on the voltage reference sec uh, section I have, it does require a negative because I have a minus 10 volt for the refer reference as well. And to be able to feed the minus 10 volt reference into my op amps to be able to drive the LM317 uh, or LM350K into a zero volt scenario, I require a negative rail on my uh, Secretary for the constant current as well and for the voltage setting as well. So uh, What I've decided is to make a little charge pump here as you can see here based on a 555 um, Oscillator so basically I've just made a little square wave generator passing it through some uh, capacitor and diode bank and passing it uh, to the 78 7905 to generate a minus 5 volt as you can see here and uh, it's very it's, it's reasonably stable uh, there's only I think it's about the uh, 15 or 20 millivolt of uh, ripple on it and uh, I've just uh, optimized it more so as you can see here on the scope at the moment I've got uh, the 20 megahertz limit on because if you test in a power supply you need to have that on and you can see here I'm on 20 millivolts per division I'm on 10 millivolt per division and I have 10 about 20 odds uh, of ripple that is um, seeing the output of the of the actual power supply so that that square wave that noise from the negative rail thepler generator is actually passing to the end to the output of the lm31 uh, lm350k uh, but the problem is i think uh, i i can improve that greatly because i think the most of the noise is coming because of all this messy wiring and stuff that i have here with the breadboard and stuff once i design a proper pcb i can bring uh, the noise i think down to about five or ten millivolt which is perfectly fine it's not a not a problem at all for the power supply that i want to build uh, as you can see here um this meter is showing the output of the buffered up amp to show me what current I am pulling from my shunt resistor basically measuring the measuring the current so as you can see here if I go at the moment it's showing me I'm pulling 2.14 amp and if I can see here this is an ammeter that I've connected to see how much how uh, you know how many amp uh, the actual circuit is pulling so as you can see here they've kind of tr tracking each other so there's only I think about uh, it's about 60 millivolt different as you can see I think about 50 millivolt different uh, that is that's not a problem as, uh, at all so I think once I uh, sort this mess out and do a proper PCB uh, that 50 millivolts should drop to about 15 or 20 millivolt if I can just bring it down here, as you can see here, I've got 1.69 and that's 1.79, so that's 10 millivolt. So obviously as you go higher, uh, the accuracy of the meter and the shunt resistor that I have here and the offset voltage of the op-amps that I have, they all come into 
into work to make this arrow that as you can see here so uh, say I've got about 50 you know 50 milliamp or 60 or 70 milliamp or even you know say about 50 milliamp arrow that's absolutely fine it's, it's not a problem at all because I'm not going to use any circuit that's gonna you know that's gonna require me to have 50 milliamp or stuff like that the constant current bit of this power supply I don't need it to be 100% precise because if I need a power supply to do precision work then I'm going to use my Agilent power supply anyway so this is just to have a constant current because this power supply can uh, output you know a couple of amps so I want to have constant current to be able to um, put it into constant current so it doesn't blow anything up it doesn't blow its own pass transistors or the project that I'm working on uh, another thing I've mentioned uh, was before when I first started this project I was going I said that I'm going to have this uh, power supply to run from 0 to 5.5 maybe but now what I want to do I want to run it from 0 to 10 volt and uh, the transformer that I have can easily manage that even when I drew about 6 amp the output of the transformer stayed at 10 volt so that's fine and uh, what I've done I found two more of those transformers uh, on my um, uh, on my lap so uh, I think I'll probably dismantle from a a power supply that I probably bought from eBay or something like that so and um, now I'm just uh, trying to think that shall I make uh, originally the plan was to make a single rail power supply so I'm thinking I might I might build a triple output power supply now so now if I if I build that then uh, uh, that, that will really help me to have that kind of power supply in my lab because uh, I got this power supply but the problem with this power supply is um, if I'm say I put the output to 10 volt uh, this power supply can output up to 36 volt at 4 amps so if I'm putting this to 10 volt that means 26 volt drop on the pass transistors at 4 amp if I'm drawing that's a lot of uh, voltage drop a lot of current and a lot of heat that gotta go through the heat sink of this uh, power supply and uh, I every couple of weeks I need to change the pass transistor because they uh, they get hot and they blow up or something like that so I might just use this power supply for anything above 15 or 20 volts and uh, make this power supply to use anything for less than that so as you can see here the constant current done next thing I need to do is um, just use a comparator for setting the constant current and the transistor to be able to switch into constant current and bring the voltage of the regulator down so it puts the power supply into constant current mode so that is, that's what I've done so far and uh, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and until next video that I'm gonna build uh, this has been tested so it's working fine so I'm gonna build a PCB um, I actually what I need to do is uh, do the con do the comparator and the switch and then if that's working fine then I'm gonna design the PCB and uh, make this so until next video thanks for watching and goodbye